Welcome to Freedom Files. I'm James Burns, and with the 2012 presidential race heating up, uh, you have a lot of candidates out there in the running, a lot of neocons, a lot of teocons, and of course you have my candidate, Ron Paul, who I once again am supporting. And I thought this would be a great opportunity for us to take a trip back in time uh, to 2008 when Ron Paul was in Shreveport campaigning. Uh, fortunately, I uh, recorded that speech, and I've been meaning to put it up on the Freedom Files channel for some time now. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, do so. A lot of the stuff he talks about in this speech uh, resonates with uh, issues going on today. care about that message. <laughs> and it is true, but it is also true that somebody has to deliver the message, and it's it's uh, myself plus all of you who do it. And the message is powerful, but the most important thing is in, we're in such great need of it. And it, it is not, it's not like I invented this message. It's not, it's not brand new. It's been around for a while. It's just that we had forgotten about it. We just needed to revitalize it. It's been here for a long time. It's what made our country great. It gives us our freedoms. And yet we have become so dependent on the federal government and the government to become the nanny state that tell us everything that we have to do with our lives, tell us, tell us everything of how, every way we can spend our money, and telling the rest of the world what to do. And I'm just so sick and tired of that. All we need to do is start obeying the Constitution and have a lot more freedom for all of us. Woo! Woo! That's pretty easy to figure that out. Because we wouldn't have to worry about income taxes. We'd get rid of the IRS. <laughs> now, we, we should have a, but this is what gives the people incentives, the fact that they can run their own lives and spend their own money. But when we become dependent on government, everything goes to Washington. Then all of a sudden, we have to fight and scream to get a little bit back. And what do we get? A lot less with a lot of regulation. Central economic planning doesn't work, even when well intended. We should know that by now, but we're drifting in that direction. Medicine is a mess today. I've been involved in medicine for a good many years. When I started in medicine, there uh, it was doctor-patient relationship, not the government. For 35 years now, we've had the introduction of managed care, and the government has taken over and it's failed. What has it done? It's just pushed the cost of medicine up. That's what it's done. Quality is down, distribution is poor, you don't have the choice of your doctor, and we have all this mess in medicine because we've had too much government. And guess what? What are <coughs> most of the demands that we're hearing about? Well, what we need is, uh, you know, socialized medicine, one-payer system. What we need is more freedom of choice. <laughs> government 
takes over. Of course, they tell you what doctor to see, but not only that, they tell you what kind of medicine to use. If you want alternative medicine, you want nutritional medicine, you want preventative medicine, oh, we don't pay for that. So this is the reason that choice is so important, whether it's our personal lifestyle, whether it's picking uh, our medical care, or how we spend our money. And this is what freedom is all about. And it's also the reason people come together. People of diversity come together because everybody gets to use their freedom as they choose. Yeah. This brings people together. What we have today is very divisive because some central government planner gets control. And then they own our lives, they own our property, and then if we have property, it ends up we don't really own it anymore. We pay rent on it. We have to ask the government all these permissions on what we can do and how and how we can make use of our property. So we have lost our way and uh, on, on property, you know, if the government decides that they think it can your property can be better used, they have the eminent domain laws. They give in, oh, we're gonna take your property and give it to somebody else. Yeah. This is uh, the system of government that has brought us to really a bankruptcy. I was gonna say near bankruptcy, but we it's not near bankruptcy. We're insolvent and the reflection of a country that becomes insolvent is the currency goes down. And the currency is going down. And what happens? The standard of living of all Americans will go down. But first, the poor and the middle class get clobbered. Right. And today, economics has become the number one issue. The war is a big issue, foreign policy is a big issue, debits are an issue, and they're all connected, but it translates in a weaker economy, and people are waking up to it. But even a year ago when I started, I talked about the economy and been predicting problems for years because of our monetary system. But now it's becoming very well known, and people are saying, well, you know, my problem is I just can't afford uh, to pay for my insurance, or I can't afford to buy my house, I can't afford this. And what that means is not so much that they have less dollars, it's that the dollars they have have less value. That's right. And this is a ruthless way that governments for not a hundred years, but thousands of years, have used to undermine the middle class and the poor at the expense of, at, at, to the benefit of those who are in charge. But we're doing it once again. It's more sophisticated than ever before because governments, it used to be they would dilute the gold or clip the coins and, and the value of the currency to run a world empire or to have uh, bread and circuses at home. And uh, every empire ends for economic reasons. And now we're facing our own problem because we've spread ourselves too widely around the world. We pretend that our wealth is going to last forever, but all we have is debt. We can't even operate our foreign policy or our domestic policy without borrowing from the Chinese. I mean, that's how bad. So we as a people have to decide what we want. We need to tighten our belts. We need to live within our means. We need to cut back, and I'll tell you one place where I think it should be easy to cut back. And we don't have to have this suffering that can come if we continue in this process with the destruction of currency. The easiest place to cut back is overseas, and we can do that by starting to bring our troops home. Today, there's not a serious intent to bring troops home. Matter of fact, all the other uh, candidates are talking about how long they're going to stay. You know, Senator McCain came up with the idea. Yeah. Yeah. If we have years. to stay a hundred years, yeah. we should stay. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, and the other threat is the war is likely to spread. We are involved behind the scenes trying to pick the next dictator of Pakistan. We're in, working very hard once again trying to overthrow the government. Of Iran. We've been doing that since the 50s, since we threw out and put in the Shah and threw out an elected leader. So it's on and on, and then they ask questions why they might get annoyed with us. Well, can you imagine what we would do as a people if somebody did to us what we do to others? I believe we would be annoyed and we would be unified and we'd stand up against those that we saw as intruders and occupiers. And we just have to see that. But all these things come to an end because eventually countries can't afford it anymore. And that is what the story is about the weakening of the dollar. 
But if we change our way and change our, our, our tactics and come home, we could restore some confidence. We don't have to wait till the destruction of the dollar and the poor can become poor and the elderly who are dependent on, on their social security check uh, won't even be able to live. Today, the cost of living is going up 10 to 15 percent and social security recipients get a 2 percent raise. And this is why people are feeling so miserable and unhappy about it. And yet, what are the proposals in Washington right now? There are two things. The government should spend more money and they should print more money. And that's, that's where the problem is. We need to cut less. We need to cut taxes significantly and cut the spending. But I think it's absolutely the easiest place is to cut this uh, on our overseas expenditure in the empire. We spend nearly a trillion dollars a year on overseas expenditures. And we can cut a lot of money out of that and this could restore confidence. Well, we get out of, we get in this trouble because we've done what other countries have done so long. It's because there's a limit to how much we can tax, a limit to how much we can borrow, and then we we have resorted to what other countries have done. They inflate. Inflate means to increase the supply of money. And today, it used to be you had to have printing presses. Well, today, well, all we have to have is computers. They can, they can create ten billion dollars in one day with a computer, and only common sense tells you. And that means the value of the dollar is going to go down. The founders of this country knew this. They were explicit on it, and they said, no printing money, only gold and silver is legal tender. And they also said, no central bank, which means no federal reserve. today, the conditions of perpetual war, staying for 100 years in Iraq, as well as having perpetual war against terrorism, which happens to be a tactic. I mean, it isn't a, a country or any one group. And the mentality now of the country is the war is perpetual, so we're expected to assume that our freedoms are going to be undermined perpetually. And that is where the problem is. Freedoms seem to be always undermined in times of war. War has been said as the health of the state. World War I, World War II, Korea War. Freedoms have been undermined, but they tended to come back to a degree. But now we say, well, this is going to last forever. So now when they undermine our right of privacy and propose national ID cards, and, and when they talk about the loss of habeas corpus, this, this, uh, this is a bad trend. This is why <coughs> we as a people have to stand up yeah. and say, we've had enough That's and we true. want our freedom hey, back. Hey, hey. Our Constitution was designed to restrain the government to release the creative energy and free people in this country. Right. It is also protected by a concept of sovereignty. I still believe in the sovereignty of the United States. Yeah. Which, means, which means we should not be beholding to the United Nations, the IMF, the World Bank, the WTO, NAFTA, yeah. no. Union. Yeah. We don't need a NAFTA highway going up to no. the no. And if you do believe in national security and national sovereignty, you know what? Maybe we ought to protect our borders. Yeah. National Guard units, which should be here for natural disaster problems as well as invasions of in illegals. Where are our guard units? They're being run down and worn out and sent overseas. They ought to be here to take care of the problems. Right. Right. Uh, the promise of amnesty and the promise of uh, benefits to any who come here illegally is an incentive for them to come. And uh, this this has to change. And we have and this can be restored by by just uh, following the rules, the, the law of the land, and. and so many people have been taught for so many decades now that the Constitution is a relative document. It should be uh, fluctuating and adapted to current times. We need to change the Constitution. We can. It should be done slowly and deliberately. But what has happened by both parties and by the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch is we have ignored the Constitution, and now there is not much left to it. And that is the problem. We need an honest Texan in the White House.
tomorrow, and we know that the enthusiasm is building. And tomorrow, I understand, there will be a caucus now and then in this, in this state, and a great deal of importance. And it can have a tremendous impact. If we can do well there and get national attention, and uh, this, this can be a real boost to us. So if, if you're not involved, find out how you can get involved, and let's really have a great showing tomorrow because uh, this, this could be very, very important. Uh, it's still relatively early in this campaign season, and a lot more has happened than I ever thought it would happen a year ago. And uh, so many people have joined, and they're so enthusiastic. And although we might not always be exactly satisfied with our national coverage or the, the time we get on the debates, but there are other sources of uh, information. There is a secret weapon. It's not so secret anymore, but it's a political equalizer called the Internet. <laughs> Thank you for coming on and for your enthusiasm. And uh, regardless of uh, what happens in the next day or two or a month or two, I am convinced that what we're doing now and what you have done and contributed to, yep. it's really only the beginning. Yeah. Go forward and restore the freedoms of this country. Thank you very much. Yeah.